Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to do a comparison of the cloud providers AWS, GCP and Azure which are also termed as hyperscalers. So hyperscalers are the large computing platforms such as AWS, GCP, Azure. So in this video I'm going to compare all these three services. So let's first understand about the market share. So if we talk about the cloud computing market share and this is as of Q1 2023, Amazon Web Services leads with a total market share of 34%. Microsoft Azure follows AWS with a market share of 21%. So as you can see, both Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure captures almost combined 55% of the market. Google Cloud Platform is the third with 11% of market share. Then you have the Alibaba Cloud and IBM Cloud following in fourth and fifth number. So as you can see, combined the total three services have around 66% share or I would say two thirds of the market with them. So this is very big. Think of it if you are browsing the internet anytime in your day, you are probably using any of the services which are hosted by these three hyperscalers. And at any given point of time, your data is traversing either of these three hyperscalers. So let us look at how the market has shifted in past six years. So these, so this is the Gartner Magic Quadrant, which is listed here. The first one is of 2016 and the second one is of 2022. In the past six years, as you can see here, we have some number of cloud service providers, but here it has reduced to a very less number. We have Entity Communication, Fujitsu, IBM, VMware, Virtual Stream, Rackspace, Centrelink, all these as kind of niche players. Then you have Google as visionaries and AWS leading in top front with just followed by Microsoft. But as of June 2022, you can see here all the three hyperscalers, AWS, Microsoft and Google are in the top leaders quadrant. Only trailing behind are Alibaba Cloud and Oracle. This is the magic quadrant provided by Gartner, which specifies the leadership of the companies. And that's why if you are looking for any type of certification, I would recommend to go for AWS or Microsoft because this is the current leader. You can also opt for Google if you have some of the certification in either of it. So I would not recommend you to go for Google certification initially, but if you have certification in AWS or Microsoft, I would recommend to go to go for a Google certification. Now let us do a comparison. AWS started in July 2002, where Amazon.com launched its first web services. The popular Amazon S3 service was launched on March 14, 2006. It comprises of over 200 services in 31 regions and 99 availability zones. The benefits are it has wide range of services, mature platform and strong developer community. The challenges in using AWS is that it might seem a bit complex to use and it has a difficult pricing model to understand. Because of the big developer community, it's suited for most of the enterprises. Second is Microsoft Azure. So Azure was launched in October 2008 when it was introduced at Professional Developer Conference and then it was officially launched as Windows Azure in February 2010. It was officially, it was again renamed to Microsoft Azure in March 2014. It offers more than 600 services, which is a very big number and spans across 60 regions and 100 availability zones. Now the, the good point, or you can say the strong point about Azure is that it's strong, it has a strong focus on building and deploying application, good integration with Microsoft products. So it is a very easy transition for all the enterprises which were already using Microsoft products, they easily migrated into Azure. It's not as mature as AWS, but some services are still in preview, but it has a vast of developer base as well. Enterprises that want to build and deploy application already using Microsoft products, uh, this Microsoft Azure is best suited for them. The third is Google Cloud. It was launched in April 2008 as Google App Engine and it was generally available in November 2011. It lists over 100 products under the Google Cloud brand, which spans across 37 regions and 112 zones. It is best suited for machine learning, data analytics, and it has a strong focus on open source. 
It is not as widely adopted as AWS or Azure, and it is suited for enterprises that need machine learning and data analytics capabilities. So this is a kind of broad comparison of all the three hyperscalers. Now let us see some of the common services across all the, all three of them. So if you compare GCP, AWS, and Azure, you can see they have similar sort of services with a different brand name. So just to give you an overview, for example, if you are coming from AWS world, you would know EC2 is the infrastructure as services for compute. That is, you can spin up virtual machine, which is similar to Google Compute Engine and Azure Virtual Machines. You can have Elastic Beanstalk, which is similar to App Engine and App Services. You can have EKS, which is the Elastic Kubernetes Services or Azure Kubernetes Services AKS or GKE, which is the Google Kubernetes Engine. Then you have Bigtable, DynamoDB and Cosmos DB. You have Redshift, which is similar to BigQuery and Synapse Analytics. Then you have Lambda, which is a serverless functionality, which is similar to Google Cloud Functions and Azure Functions. And similarly, you have Cloud Storage or Amazon S3. So this is a general comparison of all the three services. It does not cover all the services of any of the cloud platform, but the basic one. Now let us do a comparison of the cost. Generally speaking, the costing is same for all the three platforms. However, AWS might seem a bit costly. Now in this comparison, I've compared the US East or Northern Virginia region for a similar set of compute that is micro and in Azure it's called A1 standard and in GCP it's called F1 micro. And you can see AWS is a bit costly. However, it totally depends on the region and type of workload that you're running. Overall, I would say the costing is same for all the three cloud platform. If you want to learn and sign up on any of the services, each one of them provides some sort of free tier. So let us understand the free tier provided by these services. So if I go to AWS, I can go to AWS free tier and look for the services provided. So there are some of the free trials, 12 months free and always free services. And it, this page provides a complete detail. Like for example, you can have 750 hours for Amazon EC2, 5 GB of Amazon S3 and 750 hours of Amazon RDS for 12 months free. Similarly, for Azure, it also provides some of the free services for 12 months. And it gives you a $200 starting credit as well. So for the services which are free, you can spend this and you can have more credits as well. Google Cloud also provides with some of the free services, which include 20 plus free products for all customers, $300 of free credits and additional free credits for business. And it also lists what are the type of services that you can use for free for each one of the cloud services. So go and go to this URL. I've provided them in the description box and sign up in case you are looking for some of the hands on learning. So this was the comparison of all the three top hyperscalers that is Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, and last but not the least, Amazon Web Services. In the next video, I will talk about the impact of AI in their business model of all the three cloud players. I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you do, please share your thoughts in the comment box and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.